the wokeness eventually comes back to haunt you. Harley Davidson, learning this the hard way. The CEO over at Harley, again, like facing just all these bad headlines. Here's one from the Daily Mail. Harley Davidson faces fresh controversy that could kill motorcycle company after being blasted over woke DEI dictas. Go woke, go broke. As they say, we saw what happened to Bud. Bud Light, I mean, they still have not recovered from what happened to Bud Light. The advantage maybe, maybe Harley has is that they kind of have sort of a lock on that market. I don't know, you guys tell me. I mean, really, I can't think of an iconic American motorcycle company other than Harley Davidson, but they're squandering that. They're squandering it because they're now sending jobs to Thailand. You get some workers that are really, really upset about that while simultaneously pushing this woke BS that's really getting them in trouble. There's a new headline out today this is in the New York Post that really suggests this, this CEO is off his rocker, if you ask me. Here we go. This is the Harley Davidson CEO talking about or equating something with uh, the Taliban. Yes, and comparing himself to the Taliban in this newly surfaced speech as the brand is accused of going woke. What? Okay, like that's what, that was my expression. So this is this guy, Johann Zeintz. Mr. Zainz is a former sustainability leader there at Harley-Davidson because all great CEOs come from the sustainability department, right? <laughs> Wrong. Anyway, Johann Zainz from Germany, totally interesting observation that the super American motorcycle company decided to hire a German guy. Um, he, he said, imagine standing in front of CEOs of luxury brands that now think you are the sustainable Taliban, as someone once called me. This is Mr. Zeinz speaking in Zermatt at a summit in Switzerland back in 2020, and he's referencing his time as board member of Keurig, the parent company of Gucci, Puma, and Stella McCartney. So, like, he's all about sustainability, right? That was actually the first gig that he got. He was the sustainability chair when he came first to Harley-Davidson. And then a few minutes later, right in the same speech, Mr. Zainz referenced the terror group again, as shown in a video that Robbie Starbuck shared last week. So Robbie Starbuck, if you don't know him, he's an influencer, and he kind of has his company a little bit in his sights right now, which is really bad news for Mr. Zainz, because Robbie's out there saying, okay, which woke company is doing crazy things? This is going to be bad for shareholders. And you know what? He's right to do that, because you got to call it out. I don't believe in just calling out anybody, but when they're doing things that actually are bad for the company and bad for the brand, somebody should be paying attention to it. You know if it was working the other way, everybody would be paying attention to it. So the guy went on to say, of course, Harley's all about the sound and the smell of Harley Davidson, isn't it? So I became the Taliban again in a sustainable way. I mean, this is weird. Why does he keep referencing that? It's not appropriate. In any, do you think so? So this guy, Mr. Zainz, is in a little trouble. Because it's not just that. It's also this. This soundbite from an interview where he talks all about his DEI being his baby and he had a chance to reshape American culture if he took the CEO of Harley Davidson job and that's why he took it. Oh, well, sorry, we don't need you. We don't need you, Mr. Germany, reshaping our culture. And shareholders don't need you over at Harley Davidson. Here. It's no more to do some commercials for us, and the slogan was United We Ride. And we launched it just as we started to manufacture again, and that was sort of our comeback as a company into the world, opening our factories again and bringing everybody as diverse as we could possibly be as a, as a business and, 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 a, and a brand and celebrate diversity and inclusion. Uh, and, and I just, and that's one of the reasons why I, I took the job is because I believe in in a, in a credible American icon and the transformation and the opportunity to, to contribute positively to a very div divisive society. I believe that uh, business and philanthropy and working together uh, can, can make a significant impact. And I realize that in, you know, politicians and politics can only do so much and often they don't. But business uh, can be a significant force for good and not just because it's the right thing to do, it's the right thing also for the business itself. So being inclusive, I think, is a critical uh, component. Yeah. 
It's like everything, right? Inclusivity is everything. Critical component, except that what happens when it doesn't really help your company? What happens when it really takes off? The people that buy your products, and that's what's starting to happen. And so the company's in a bad spot. Series of things have gone on, right? They've moved jobs to Thailand. They've required dealerships, of which the dealers would argue there are too many. They've required these dealerships to have all kinds of spiffy upgrades, and they've saturated them from the dealer's viewpoint with way too many bikes and the dealers can't sell this many bikes and they can't do all these improvements. And so now the CEO has had to back off those plans and he's saying, okay, now you don't have to make these improvements in 2025 and we will stop sending you so many bikes to sell. Now the company's profitability has been okay because he's found ways basically to put it on the dealers. So that's not very good because, you know, your dealers are kind of in this revolt and the dealers are like, I don't want to do this. It's just like, you know, if you squeeze their profitability, they're not going to keep their store open anymore. There's a little lesson in here for Kamala Harris, because if you squeeze the profitability of companies so much so that they can't turn a profit, then they're not going to actually want to be in business anymore. So the woke stuff it's going too far. It's going too far, ladies and gentlemen. You know it. I know it. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you share. Make sure you like all of those good things. Let me know whether you've ever driven a Harley Davidson, whether there is another kind of Harley out there.